Yes, today on People Now, tributes pouring in after the death of pop culture superstar Grumpy Cat. We're breaking down the Big Bang Theory's final goodbye as the series comes to an emotional end. Plus, we want to make connections, real connections. It's not just for TV, it's for my life. Is the Bachelorette Hannah B in love? We find out. Also, glad to be around my neck and I flip them around. <laughs> How did Halle Berry's fight training work its way into playtime with her kids? She's got a hilarious story. Plus, Jana Kramer and Mike Cosson are here opening up about rebuilding their marriage after infidelity and more from their hit podcast, Wind Down. It's all coming up today on People Now. Hey, good morning, guys. Happy Friday. Woo! Good to see you. The end of the week. Is it happy, though? Because guess what? Grumpy Cat. I I'm sad about it. I know, a lot of people, it's vi it's viral. She's Trending. iconic. She's gone, we're gonna yeah. talk all about that. But, we're actually ending the week with a bang, sort of, Thursday night's two-part series finale for The Big Bang Theory. Saw some major emotional moments go down as the characters said their final goodbyes. If you haven't seen that last episode, or the last night's episode, stop listening now. We have some major spoilers coming up for The Big Bang Theory, and they begin right now. The biggest news of the finale had to be that Penny and Leonard are having a baby. That's right. Your favorite girl next door and quirky scientist are expecting. Penny and Leonard tell Sheldon about the big news on their way to Sweden, where Sheldon and Amy are being honored with the Nobel Prize for Physics. Unfortunately, though, Sheldon's self-centered attitude got in the way of really enjoying the special moment, and Leonard called him out for it. Sheldon has a change of heart before he's given the award and dedicates his entire speech to his friends and what a heartfelt moment it is. Bring out the tissues if you haven't seen it yet. In part of his speech, he thanks his friends saying, I have been encouraged, sustained, inspired, and tolerated not only by my wife, but by the, create, uh, the greater group of friends anyone ever had. Uh, don't worry though, in classic Big Bang style, they wouldn't completely tear up your emotions without a fun surprise. That's right, Sarah Michelle Gellar makes an appearance in the finale. The show has some of the best guest stars around and they nailed it, bringing in Buffy the Vampire Slayer in the finale. Even with all of this going on though, one of the biggest shocks to fans came when the forever broken elevator was finally fixed. That elevator next to apartment 4A and 4B was out of order and covered with yellow caution tape for 12 seasons. It's finally back in business as they say goodbye. And in an emotional ending, the group of friends sat on the couch eating their food while an acoustic version of the show's theme song played. Where are the tissues for that? Fans feeling all the emotions. One Twitter fan responded to the finale saying, I'm laughing and crying at the same time while watching Big Bang Theory. We feel you. They're really good about that, kind of striking the balance, you know? Another fan wrote, thank you, Big Bang Theory, for reminding us the beauty and the value of friendship. This fan wrote her thanks to the series for the sweetest, best series finale, an absolutely perfect ending. If you need me, I'll be in the corner singing Soft Kitty. Let me just say this. I'm a real sucker for the last episode of shows. Like yeah. when I was a kid, when I would watch last episodes, I would get really emotional. It was like the passing of an era. And that's definitely true for this like show. It's 12 seasons. And now I'm curious what everyone's going to do in the cast. I know. They're so, her family at this point. Yeah. I think they're just going to go enjoy their money for a while. Yeah, <laughs> I know. so much cash you on know, this show. Like a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so bye bye to them. And we wish them the best. Let's move mm -hmm. on to this. Tati Westbrook is breaking down why she posted that now infamous 43 minute video in which she called out the alleged inappropriate and entitled behavior of fellow YouTuber James Charles. All right, follow me here. Tati uploaded an 18 minute video on Thursday entitled, Why I Did It. She claimed that she made the video as an attempt at a wake up call for James, her former friend and mentee. See the emotional clip for yourself. Watch a little bit here. This was really a wake up call and it was me trying to reach someone who I found completely unreachable and I had been trying to deliver the same message so many times because this wasn't just about one thing. All right, so there's that, but then Tati continued to say that her initial video was about respect and honesty and about James Charles' behavior that she didn't agree with. Tati says in her latest video, I think the message was heard. Their feud began in April when James posted to his Insta stories about Sugar Bear Hair, a direct competitor to Tati's Halo Beauty line. Big no-no. <laughs> Tati tearfully responded on her Instagram stories without calling out James directly. Tati admitted that she felt betrayed and lost. And then things really got serious. Tati's lengthy video posted last Friday where she accused James of betraying her and spreading lies about her, making negative comments about other beauty influencers and allegedly sexually harassing straight men. James identifies as gay. James did not immediately respond to people's requests for comment about all of those allegations, but posted his own YouTube video on Saturday acknowledging he should have been, quote, far more careful in his interactions. Tati explains in Thursday's video that she knew her initial video 
now known as the Bye Sister video, would cause a lot of controversy. She admits, however, she never thought that it would get to this magnitude. James Charles has lost over 3 million YouTube subscribers to date since Tati's Bye Sister video was published. Stars including Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato, Kylie Jenner, they all unfollowed James after Tati's video. But Tati admits she didn't intend or expect the intense wave of backlash to hit the 19-year-old, assuming she would actually be the one that would take the hit. Tati continued to explain that she wishes no ill will on James. She says, quote, I do really want the hate to stop. I want the picking sides and the abusive memes and the language and all of that. I really hope on both sides it can stop. That's not why I made the video. James posted an emotional apology to his YouTube channel entitled Tati. He says that after meeting Tati, she very quickly took on a parental role with him. He was emotional and distraught throughout that video. Here's a quick look at that. I'm so disappointed in myself that I ruined our relationship through all of this. What sucks the most is that I know there's nothing I can say or do to ever earn that friendship or trust back. Hmm. Will there be a reckoning here? We don't know. Despite the video posted Thursday, Tati said that she's still taking a break from social media, warning her now 10 million viewers, I'm not back. I needed to hop on, answer some questions, and at least do that for you while I take time out. That's kind of putting, getting back on though, right? I mean, if you're commenting, I don't know. She added that while she has some pre-filmed videos she might upload, she won't be filming any new content for the time being. She continues in part, quote, I've always said I want my channel to be an escape and a good place, and I still want my channel to be that, but right now I need to take a time out. So we'll keep you posted on the drama here. Drama, on a lot the of drama. YouTubes. I think she'll be back in a day or so. It's like, okay, 24 hours and I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on to this. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were forced to leave their home earlier this year after paparazzi used a helicopter to take aerial photos of inside of their house. The pictures were taken in January of the couple's Oxfordshire home and were later published by outlets, including The Times. According to the palace, the low altitude shots looked into the living area and dining area of the home and directly into the bedroom. Harry has since won what is being referred to as a substantial sum in damages and legal costs from Splash News and also acknowledged formal apologies from Splash News and Picture Agency. In a statement made in court, Harry's lawyer said that the images, quote, undermine the safety and security of the Duke, adding the couple are no longer able to live at that property. The couple used it as a rural escape from their first marital home, Nottingham Cottage. In a statement made in the court by Harry's lawyers, it was said the home, quote, had been chosen by the Duke for himself and his wife, given the high level of privacy it afforded, describing its position in a secluded area surrounded by private farmland. Now, in a statement sent to Britain's press association uh, news agency, Splash called the photos an error of judgment and promised to have taken steps to ensure it won't be repeated. The agency also apologized to Harry and Meghan for, quote, the distress we have caused. But Harry and Meghan have plenty of other happy things to celebrate these days. Of course, their newborn son, Archie Harrison, was born on May 6th. They've since settled into their new home, Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. And their first wedding anniversary is this Sunday, May 19th. Which is crazy. I mean, they've come so far in just one year. Remember how excited people were for the wedding? Now there's the baby. Yeah, things have moved along quickly, watching them travel the world, connecting with the people, kind of modernizing the royal family in many ways as they've moved along here. Yeah, and we're just learning that the birthplace of baby Archie has been revealed. The birth certificate reveals that Archie was born at the private Portland Hospital in Westminster. A representative from the Westminster Registrar's Office went to visit the couple at their home of Frogmore Cottage in Windsor on Friday afternoon, so they didn't have to go to the office themselves. Sarah, Duchess of York, welcomed Princesses uh, Beatrice and Eugenie at Portland Hospital. Victoria Beckham also gave birth there. Just a little history. Yeah, and just like her sister-in-law, Kate Middleton, Meghan is listed as a Princess of the United Kingdom on the birth certificate. We'll have even more royal news later in the show, including how you could actually work for the Queen. An interesting <laughs> development here that's coming up in our Royal Record Recap, so stick around for that. All right, we talked about this. The Internet's favorite frowning feline has died. Grumpy Cat, whose real name was Tartar Sauce, passed away peacefully on Tuesday morning in the arms of her caretaker, Tabitha Bundesen, seven years old. Yeah, Bundesen announced the news Friday morning in a touching message. The family said Grumpy Cat passed due uh, to complications from a recent urinary tract infection that became too tough to overcome. And the tributes have been pouring in across social media. Many people shocked, heartbroken. Even, I'm kind of sad, Jeremy. It is sad. Even Sesame Street paid tribute <laughs> and reminisced about when Grumpy Cat met Oscar the Grouch. 
Grumpy Cat, quite the fan base. The beloved feline first found internet fame in 2012, garnering more than 12 million followers across social media, becoming a household name with everything from plush toys, the books, her own movie, even a wax figure at Madame Tussauds. I mean, she was a trailblazer, really, though. It's been reported that she had a net worth of an estimated $100 million. Mind blowing <laughs> Can you how they hit the Instacat famous lottery here. Yeah, this, they got in early. <laughs> and look, let's just say this rest in feline heaven, Grumpy Cat. We're going to be be, uh, celebrating Grumpy Cat's life throughout the show today. Don't go anywhere. We are all so torn up about the death of Grumpy, aka Tartar Sauce. So to honor Grumpy Cat's memory, we want to see your favorite gifts of the famed feline. So tweet them to us with the hashtag people now. We're going to check in on those later in the show, but first, Andrea, more for us in Star Trek. Yes, we are kicking off Star Trek today with one rapper receiving some criticism for his latest Insta post. All right, so summer is still on its way, but Drake is already showing off his beach bod on the gram. He posted this photo on his profile, captioning it, I forget what it's called, but I remember the feeling. Wow. So poetic. <laughs> the rapper received a stream of support from his over 57 million followers for his sculpted abs. But even though the comment section is filled with fire and heart eye emojis, one commenter's message stood out from the rest. Uh -oh. Producer and DJ Carnage took the photo as an opportunity to call out Drake for allegedly not getting that bod in a natural way. He wrote, you got fake ab surgery in Colombia. You ain't fooling anybody. <laughs> wow. But if you clap at Drake, expect him to clap back. Drake responded writing, is this because you are angry about the one thing that happened with that one person the other day who you thought was your wifey? <laughs> Ouch, what does that even, what happened? I need more of the story here. A Drake's trainer even hopped into the mix, offering his fitness services to Carnage. So the exchange might seem heated, but we're pretty sure it was all in good fun. Both Carnage and Drake are friends. They were last spotted together on Easter Sunday. They were having a grand old time, so it's all good. Drake even responded to their Instagram exchange saying, hey, relax, we are friends in real life. But Carnage actually isn't the first one to suggest that Drake got work done on his abs. Back in 2016, rapper and podcaster Joe Bun Budden dissed Drake, making fun of his sculpted midsection and sparking rumors that Drake had gone under the knife to get them. And rapper Pusha T kept those same rumors alive when he mentioned the words surgical summer and snip, snip, snip in his 2018 diss track to Drake titled Infrared. Look, innocent until proven guilty, right? Also. Who cares? Ab shaming. Wow. Ab shaming. We're to that level now. If I now. could pay for those, I would definitely. 100 I mean, do it. he looks great, <laughs> so I don't think we're mad about it. Anyway, moving on to this. Kylie Jenner has got a tiny new addition in the form of some serious ink. The reality star posted a pic on her Instagram story Thursday of her latest tattoo, a small tribute to her 15-month-old daughter Stormy. So Jenner got her daughter's name tattooed in uppercase letters, showed off the artwork with a picture of the tat on her left arm. It's a little hard to see. I imagine taking a picture of the back of your arm is kind of hard. So thank God for front-facing cameras. Also, it's Kylie Jenner. I'm sure she has someone around to help her. It's a little blurry, but Kylie's best friend Stassi's on the left. She got an identical Stormy tat on her right arm. Safe to say Stassi is basically an aunt to Stormy now, too. I think it's a front cam. I think it's definitely a front cam. Yeah, I think so. It's hard to tell. We'll investigate further and get back to you to on know. what the camera was. <laughs> uh, Kylie wrote on the picture that arm scab, highlighting a small scab on her arm with a tat Liz. But Kylie, I don't think any of your followers care about your arm scab. Looking great. Kylie's tribute to her baby girl is very sweet. We've seen the two share such incredible bonds since little Stormy was born. So we're looking forward to some more pics of the tat and Stormy soon. But staying on the Kardashian-Jenner train here, it is all love between Khloe Kardashian and Caitlyn Jenner. So she sat down, Khloe did, with divorce attorney Laura Wasser for an episode of her podcast called Divorce Sucks, got pretty candid about how she and Caitlyn are getting along. The reality star told Wasser, when I see Caitlyn, it's fine. I think we're, we've really come a long way. It was a struggle, I think, for all of us, not because she was transitioning, I think from just how it was all handled. Now, fans might recall the drama that went down in 2015 when Caitlyn made her debut as a transgendered woman. She opened up about the process and her divorce from Kris Jenner in Vanity Fair, had some less than kind words to say about the Kardashian fam. Currently, Caitlyn has been seen frequently hanging out with business partner Sophia Hutchins, a transgender woman who works as the executive director of the Caitlyn Jenner Foundation, which is a transgender rights organization. Chloe told Wasser that Hutchins is really, really sweet. I'm happy for them. Now, Hannah B is this season's Bachelorette, and while we are just getting started on the season, Hannah B has already filmed it. She may or may not be engaged. We don't know. So I sat down with the Bachelorette and tried to find out if she's in love today. I am happy. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it was it was a wonderful experience for me with some great guys, and um, and I'm super thankful. But it was also a struggle. I mean, there was a lot of ups and downs that I wasn't 
prepared for and there were moments where I just didn't know what was going to happen with this. But I know that how everything happened was how it was supposed to and I can have a smile on my face now. Yeah, you said on Instagram you're still recovering, so in what ways are you still recovering from this experience? Sleep. <laughs> I probably should get my fanny in the gym because I ate so many croissants. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, it's just, it's a lot. Nobody can really prepare you for this position and what it's like dating 30 men and every single day. And especially when you want to make connections, real connections. It's not just for TV, it's for my life. And so that that's emotionally draining because there's a lot of emotions being put in. Yeah. And we are already seeing the emotions running high this season, but what can you expect? Turns out being the Bachelorette is not quite what Hannah B expected. She told us all about it. I don't think I prepared for it. The, it it's just constant. It's, you, you're, you're in one relationship one day and then you're back to the next. And it's like, how do you compartmentalize and how do you really give each relationship what it fully needs? So that was a struggle for me. I love talking to her. She's very sweet, very genuine. We also wanted to get to know Hannah B a little more with the game of This or That. And yes, it was a ploy to try and figure out who she picked at the end. Watch. Facial hair or clean shaven? Which do you prefer? Facial hair. Arms or booty? I think arms. <laughs> Good. So they can lift me up. Jumping over a fence or jumping out of a box? Jumping over a fence. Really? You yeah. didn't like the box entrance? It scared me. <laughs> I think I had to like take a breather for a little bit. Bad boy or mama's boy? I wish I could say mama's boy, but I love a bad boy. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I work, I'm working on it. I will say, I think a bad boy can be a mama's boy too. But those are always a bad the worst boy can kind. be a good man. That really? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Eyes or smile? I think smile. Yeah. I think maybe because that's what people recognize about me, but I prefer that they both be beautiful. You do have a great smile. Thank you. Fantasy Suites, that's gonna be coming up on the season. Mm -hmm. Do you like a man that takes charge or is Hannah B always in control? I am always in control, but I need somebody who can step it up and meet me where I'm at. Nice. I really liked her. That was like Hannah B interviewing Hannah B. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, wait, who's? When, no, when she was announced like as a bachelor, people did tweet me and say that we look like it's, sisters. Especially but in also the, that we're blonde with dimples. No, I don't but know. that particular bit, the hair, everything's like kind of done the same. You she was so it's like sweet. Hannah I really B's liked. Sister. I really liked talking. No, she to her. is great. Those are your star tracks for today. Stay with us, guys. We're putting John Wick stars Keanu Reeves and Halle Berry to the test in a round of rapid fire questions. Plus, we're joined by Jana Kramer and husband Mike Cosson. They're talking all about forgiveness, family life, and their revealing podcast, Wind Down. That's coming up. All right, we are honoring the life of Grumpy Cat today, who has died this week at the age of seven. We've been asking you to tweet your favorite gifts of the memeable feline. So let's check in to see what you've been tweeting so far. Let's see here. Lots of love. Nope. nope. Some, yeah, there's this great gifts. Um, He's staring at me. She looks like she wants to hurt me. My favorite one is the one that says, this is my smile, and it's a close-up of the... Oh, <laughs> the real... It's a good one. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of love to Grumpy Cat today. Keep sending in those gifts. We'll get back to some more a little later. We're loving those memes. We're going to continue to celebrate Grumpy Cat all day and the impactful life she led. So for a good flashback Friday from 2016, here's when Grumpy Cat was unimpressed with 2017's <laughs> sexiest man alive, Blake Shelton. Take a look. Margaret. I gotta say, it is so cool meeting you, Mr. Grumpy Cat. I mean, it's like a dream come true, really. Oh, I'm sorry. Miss Grumpy Cat. Well, uh, anyway, let's get started, shall we? Am I excited to host this year's Kids' Choice Awards? I couldn't be more excited. No persuasion needed here. <laughs> you see what I did there? <clears throat> All right, okay, moving on. Yes, I'm into everything the kids are into these days. I've got my very own hoverboard. I've got all the lyrics to Bad Blood down pat. And I think it's fair to call myself a Hunger Games super fan. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Grumpy catness. <laughs> well, now this is just getting awkward, isn't it? Oh, the slime! Let's see. If I could slime just one person, it would definitely be Dwayne Johnson. I mean, I can picture it meow. You gotta be kidding me. Kid, kidding me. 
All right, Royal fans, get those resumes ready. Queen Elizabeth looking for a new digital communications officer and here to tell us exactly what that means and if you could qualify. People's senior news editor, Aaron Hill, and our royal correspondent, Imogen Lloyd Webber. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Good to see you. Hi. All right, let's talk about this digital communications officer. Aaron, what's yes. the job going to entail? Queen is looking to up her likes, I think. So <laughs> she wants somebody to manage her, all her social media platforms, also manage the website, write some articles. You're going to be on hand at royal engagements, awards, and outings, uh, state visits, um, and really just just managing Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. What qualities will be most important? Basically, could you or I, or any of us, have this job? <laughs> I think you need a little more skill than just your general, you know, uploading to to Instagram. You need to have photo skills, of course. Some video production skills is a plus. I'm feeling um, pretty good so far about my resume. Yeah. For this. yeah. Um, living okay. living in London, you'll be working in Buckingham Palace. That's a problem. Okay. The salary is thirty-eight thousand a year. That's a problem. That's that not that much. <laughs> you do get <laughs> two kids. That's not yes, that much for me. Not in London. I'm telling you. You get free lunch and you get thirty-three days off a year. Yeah, okay. That's Nice. Brits and their holidays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to hear from both of you on this one. Um, do we think this could be in response to the whole Sussex Royal Instagram account? That was a big deal when that came up. What do you say? I mean, the fastest ever to get to a million followers. I think it took them less than six hours. And I had a look. They're now at eight million followers. And Kate and um, Kate and William are at 8.8 .8 million. Wow. So they've really caught up yeah. very, very quickly. Haven't yeah, they? There's, yeah. A, there's a solid, dedicated audience of Royals fans that get in on this. Erin, do you think it has to do with that Instagram I do. Account? I think they're taking a look and they're like, this is where we need to be. We need to grow this. And so they obviously are inspired by that. Yeah. All right. Well, so growing the social media yeah. presence, talk to us, Imogen, some about how that's evolved over maybe the past 10 years or so. Things have really changed for the Royals in terms of being interested in being online. They have, but they were on it pretty early. Um, in 2009, the Royal Household created an official Twitter account, um, and the Queen sent her first tweet in 2014. Uh, she only sent her first Instagram, though, this year. She was a bit slow on that one. <laughs> um, but look, I think when I think back to covering the Royal Wedding in 2011, that was really the first social media Royal Wedding, and they were all over it there. And then when Prince George was born, they sort of ripped out the royal book. Um, you know that that whole sort of thing that they do outside Buckingham Palace, mm -hmm. and they they you know place the announcement outside there. They actually would put everything out on social media as well. They realized they move with the times on that one. Yeah, they, um, they kind of do both, right? Yeah. So this, the symbolic uh, piece of it is still there, but then they also feature it on social uh, media. And, they, and the royals at the end of the day realize that, look, um, viewership is down for TV news, um, less people are reading newspapers, um, and they want people to engage with them, and social media is where it's at. Let's talk about this. The Queen also made a bold hiring choice this week, appointing the first female dean of Her Majesty's Chapel's Royal in history. A lot of words. <laughs> What does this mean? What's going on with this role? So Bishop Sarah Mullally is to take over from Lord Chartres, um, who's been there since 1995, and she's a self-described feminist. She's the first female in the post since it was created, wait for this, Jeremy, I know you love all this stuff, in the Middle Ages. Wow. And she's the primary representative of the church and the royal court. So this is actually a really big deal and a seismic shift. You know, once again, the Queen showing she can absolutely adapt with the times. This was unthinkable 20 years ago, let alone, I mean, you know, 50 years sure. ago. And we could see her have a big role in um, Archie's christening. Yeah. So that would be the ro same. The royals do seem to continually be moving in more progressive angles. They and modernize, but they're never modern. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That is good. <laughs> You've thought about that one. Uh, let's switch gears here a little to Queen Elizabeth's grandson and new dad, Prince Harry. We've been seeing him out and about since Archie was born. He and Meghan are in the news for a very different reason this week. Aaron, some legal drama here. Break this down for us. Yeah, so Harry received substantial damages from the news agency Splash after photos that were taken from a low-flying helicopter um, showed intimate details of their home in Oxfordshire, which is their previous country home before they moved to Windsor. So they took them to court and they won wow. and so these photos showed inside the living room dining room even into the bedroom so uh yeah definitely upsetting for them it, it's really interesting to hear that kind of, of ruling come down that's a strong statement right and, and a, a good warning yeah. for mm -hmm. other organizations that would maybe try to do something like that we see photos of the royals a lot in different situations in public but there are some things that are off limits imogen you and i've talked about this in the past about yeah. where the lines are kind of drawn here so diana's death is still very much blamed on the paparazzi by many senior royals including william and harry so that you know, needs to be kept in mind here um, so they will not now tolerate long lenses on private situations. That's a total no-go. Um, there were some topless photos of Kate took in that, taking in that situation in 2012. I remember that, yeah. And they, they took um, the Cambridge's Paris closer to court and won. 
Um, and they're also, I think William is very, very protective of the little Cambridges. And we will see that with little baby Sussex as it's, well. It's really interesting because, you know, they do give the press great photo op moments. Yeah. And that's sort of their offering, right? Yeah. Hey, we're here for you. We're here for the Over public. Over birthdays and you know, christenings and everything else, we do see them. They do provide those photos. But then they're like, no. That's kind of the exchange. Yeah. We give you this. Now we get some privacy in these situations. Yeah. All right. We have to talk about baby Archie. Still on our minds around here. So much anticipation for that first photo op at Windsor Castle. Now that we've seen him, we know the name. We also know they plan to raise him much more privately than we might be used to. When do you guys expect that we'll see him again? Well, traditionally, the christening. Right. Yeah. And there's also, Will and Kate have tended to release a one-month photo of all three of their children. So maybe they'll post a photo at the one-month birthday of, and of Archie. And who can we'll forget, see. we've seen a foot, Jeremy. We, just <laughs> we on the saw Instagram. the foot on Mother's Day, which you actually predicted. That there would be some. No, I didn't predict a foot, but I did predict something yeah. on Mother's Day. And, and then these photos, of course, will hold us over until then as well. Yes. It'll be interesting following at Sussex Royal to see if anything comes earlier than that month mark or any yeah. different times. All right, another thing. Talk about a, a switching gears dramatically here. We're mourning the loss of Grumpy Cat. We are. Yes, uh, very sad. Imogen, you and I immediately, as soon as this came up this morning, mm. you talked about the momentous occasion, Grumpy Cat coming to Cats on Broadway, which Imogen and Lloyd Webber, you have a connection quite, to Cats on Broadway. Quite rightly, Grumpy turned up and upstaged all of the Jellicle Cats. All of them. I mean, look, look, Grumpy Cat has total attention there. He's the full control um, of the cat. So very, very sad day for all of us. And I have to say, um, you know, speaking to insiders about this, there was far more traction on Grumpy Cat visiting than Courtney Kardashian. Oh, my goodness. Hard <laughs> to imagine. I know. Sorry, wow. sorry, Courtney. That's Courtney Billioni Lewis. I think. Precious yeah. memories there. That's, um, Tyler Haynes. That's Tyler Haynes with uh, Grumpy Cat. And I honestly, Look at, look at Grumpy. It's a very tragic day, Jeremy. Poor Grumpy. Erin, mm. um, you met Grumpy. I did meet Grumpy. Grumpy was a little standoffish. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> on star. brand. Grumpy's a star. On yeah. brand, yes. yeah. Uh, but it was but a, a, a baby. Just a little uh, kitten at the time. Okay. Yeah. But still very Grumpy. Okay, go. More Grumpy cat memories. <laughs> grumpy correspondence. Grumpy correspondence here. <laughs> Imogen and Erin, thank you so much for being here. Good to see you. Thanks. All right, it's a big weekend for John Wick fans. The vigilante hitman is fighting his way through the streets of New York in John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. It is out this weekend. It is a great movie. It's a very intense movie. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Halle Berry teaming up with Keanu Reeves for this installment. Even though Halle was fighting a bit of a cold, it was kind of hard for her to talk during the interview. She and Keanu told me how excited she was to dive into those intense fighting sequences in the movie and how those skills accidentally showed up while playing with her kids. Hallie really committed to the John Wick training and to the fighting, and her commitment is, was inspiring. Did you walk away with skills that you can utilize? I mean, I, for me, I feel immediately like I would think I could kick butt on the street. I don't know. Do you think that? For sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I'm now a black belt or anything, but I do have some things that I've practiced so many times they are part of my body, they're in my body, that they would probably just come out of me naturally. Um, you know, my son the other day grabbed me around my neck and I flipped him around on the floor. <laughs> no way. Did you really? Yeah. Your poor son. It's just like, it's just reflex at this point. It becomes like a reflex. It's like, but mom, I just wanted a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> She's there with filmmaker uh, Chad Stahelski. Obviously had a great time making this. We know that Halle Berry is this incredible actress, serious butt kicker in John Wick, but we wanted to see what else is going on in her life these days with a quick rapid fire. Top song on your playlist. I would have to say Beyonce Crazy in Love because I just had to make a video to that. It's on my playlist because that's all I've been playing. <laughs> Favorite childhood pet? My dog. Yeah, what is it? Do you remember anything? Boyke. Boyke? Don't ask me. Okay. <laughs> Most important part of your self-care regimen besides those bubble baths we've seen on social lately? Red wine. What's a Halle Berry movie you would stop and watch if you're flipping through the channels? Um, oh, Babs. It makes me laugh. Favorite part of uh, mom life right now for you? Probably all the lessons I learned. They teach me something new almost every single day about them and about myself. They just celebrated the one year anniversary of their award winning podcast, Wine Down. And Jana Kramer, along with her husband, Michael Cawson, continue to open up to fans about their relationship, marriage, and parenting. And they join us now. Thank you guys for being here. It's good to yeah, see you. Thank you guys. Thanks Appreciate it. it. Yeah. You guys are I, moving soon. Yeah, back to Nashville. That's everything. crazy. He's, moving, he's driving his truck back from LA to Nashville in what? Next weekend. Six days. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. By the way, I've done that cross country a couple times. I really think it's fun. 
He's you don't, you're not looking forward to it? Right? Not as much. This time I am because my little brother's coming with me, but the first time I did it, I did it in one straight stretch. With your dad. 31 hours straight. Oh, that's like brutal. Not stopping. Yeah. So you got to stop a couple times. I to say you guys yeah. are pretty busy right now. <laughs> um, the podcast just marked his one year anniversary. Congratulations. How did you, you celebrate? Um, we celebrated in studio actually because we had to, you know, just tape an episode. But we need to actually celebrate because we actually didn't celebrate together. No, we really didn't. It was more like, oh, yay. But <laughs> <That> <laughs> it should be celebrated because it's, it's, you know, we, we've, um, you know, we've really made kind of our, our name for ourselves and we're trying to help people with the podcast. So it's been, it's been amazing, but you know, we need to cheers, wind down. Yes, we do. Yeah. yeah. And the no. whole year of opening up your hearts to people. I mean, that's a lot. It is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been, you know, it's been tough, but at the same time, like, again, like, all the messages and emails that we get, it's, it's been great. Like, people are like, thank you for helping us. And It's been yeah. therapeutic for us. It's really been our platform to kind of build a brand together, and so we've really embraced that and realized how much we can impact and help people. Yeah, I've been married for about 11 years. And 11 years? That's right. I know. I got married when I was very young. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> you look great. Yeah. That's, I'm at that point now. People say, you look great for your age. Thank you. I don't know. Backhanded? Either way. Wait, how old yeah, are you? Absolutely. 37. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah. You got married young. I did. Yeah. I got married, so I was like 26. You got married in the Midwest but, way. That's that's right, yeah. while living in L.A. Oh, wow. Anyway, so enough about me. Here's the deal. As a married as a married couple, we've realized the advantage of having other couples that ex share their experiences. And this uh, one-year anniversary of the pod and the podcast, you guys are talking to the couple who helped you through sex addiction, right? Mm -hmm. And right. that's something, obviously, that's very um, intimate and something to open up about. But have you found, or how have you found that that's helped other couples that are listening? Just through really just social media and Jana's direct messages and emails that we get to our iHeart email account, just them, we're really impressed with the fans being willing to open up themselves also and, and be vulnerable and, and express to us their stories and how much ours is helping them. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that like Mike went that extra layer to talk about addiction has been amazing because you know there's so many people out there because sex addiction isn't a very uh, socially accepted addiction really yet yeah so i think people are still kind of wanting to know more about it and ask questions and i think because a lot of people either say like oh it's an excuse and it's just that we're trying to stop that stigma well yeah and we hear about this um with different celebrities that kind of come forward and, and talk about having sex addictions and things of that nature mm -hmm. as you've opened up really intimately what have been some of the struggles that you face right i mean that's a distinct choice to do it mm -hmm. and then you do it and maybe it turns out to be or feel a little different than you thought it would i don't know I mean, I'll let you speak on that because that's, you, you know, you, you know, you're... I mean, I'm actually surprised that there hasn't been as many issues as we anticipated with kind of fully opening up about all this. The unfortunate thing is because of the whole Me Too movement, it either gives the whole addictive piece either a, a more of an excuse or more people are, are aware of it socially and accept it a little bit. So we're kind of in that, that battle right now to, you know, kind of move the needle where it's not just a, an excuse, it is an actual addiction. Yeah. And I think a lot of people relate to you too on the other side of things and seeing how strong you are and being able to help him through that. Right. So I think it's such a powerful podcast. You guys won an iHeartRadio Award for Best Entertainment Team Woo! Podcast. So <laughs> yes, looking at everything you. you've gone through together and this whole journey, like how does that feel to then win this award? It's awesome just because, again, I, I think every single one of my friends besides like one was like, leave. Mm -hmm. like, you know, that's the first thing. It's so easy to be like, if he cheats on me, I'm going to leave. And it's it's so much harder when you have kids. And it's just, you know, for me to be like, hey, look, like, you can have this awful thing happen in your marriage, but you can be stronger at the end of it. Like, I wouldn't change a thing. And back in the day, I'm like, I wish he didn't do this. But now I'm like, hey, we're so much stronger. That's and, our story. And we've been able to help people to be like, Give it a try, you know. Don't just don't just leave because that's the easy route out. Yeah, and you can you always learn too that life isn't always black and white. No, so it's, really everyone not. else has there's there's gonna be issues, and so it's like try to fight for your marriage if two people are willing to work. It, that's the key, right? Yeah. Two people being willing it, to fight for If someone's not willing to work, then don't stay in an unhealthy marriage. But if two people are willing to fight for their marriage and their family, then then give it a shot. And you mentioned uh, having kids. Some wonderful news. You welcomed your second child in November. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, being a parent of two. That's Aww. that's a game changer, right? <laughs> yes, it is. There's no, qu <laughs> there's no question. You're quick to pipe up on that one because yeah, it, it, it really does. It makes does. one seem so easy. Yeah. You know, when, when we have friends that complain when they have one kid, we're like, oh, you, know, you don't know anything yet. Yeah. <laughs> I think if we didn't have the therapy that we had, we might have been divorced. <laughs> <laughs> like that turns out to be more of a challenge than the other stuff. A hundred percent. I was like, wow. Like, luckily we had the communication skills to be able to talk to each other. Because if true. not, I mean, it was like, you're just like in the trenches, man, with two. Yeah. So, but and, I mean, now it's amazing. And you guys actually let 
people listen to your delivery live on it. podcast, which I think is so crazy. Uh, if I could like what, go back on that one, I would. Yeah, on but that. what made you want to do that? I'm like, well, we've been open about everything else, so why don't we, you know, let them listen to the live birth? But I didn't know I was going to have an anxiety attack and puke and like be freaking. And out I was kind of biting my biting my tongue because I remember how she was for the first one. Yeah. And I was like, you really want to do this? I don't think you remember. <laughs> do how you, you ever were. go back and listen to it? Um, I turned it off we, we started we tried to listen to it and I started crying and I was like I'm so embarrassed people are gonna think I'm crazy like why like but how why good did you this? feel afterwards when people you know people were so sweet and we're like oh my god I freaked out too yeah. and I passed out too and I was screaming and yelling and I was like oh god if I, I, if I ever have a baby I'll have to listen to that yeah. I'm so to prepare myself you'll feel so much better yeah about and having gone through it twice I'm like no I mean anything that would happen there I feel like is it's like so many people would be like yep that's that's how yeah. it is yeah. all right we have wild. a little game ready oh, fun I love games. Right, so if your four-year wedding anniversary coming up now that you are four years in we want to see how well you know each other we're assuming really well but let's play the newlywed game all right you ready let's for do this it. I, oh, I here Sports is going to ask right one of you the question. You'll both jot down the answer. We'll just kind of throw the, the question out for you. All right, Mike, here we go. <laughs> what is uh, Jana's ideal date night? Ooh. Here we go. Do you guys even you get a lot of times a date? Just the one or two worder if you want, and then and then you can explain it. Um, you ready? Three. Right. Same time. Two. two one. one. Reveal. Flip ideal date night. Probably on the couch. Bottle, bottle of wine, wine and, and me. Yeah. I think that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next one. Jana, what's Mike's least favorite chore around the house? <laughs> this, I feel like this is like any chore. You guys have immediate answers, though, which is very impressive. Here we go. Ready? All right. One, two, two three, three. Reveal. reveal. Putting kids, Putting kids clothes, clothes away. away. Laundry. Yeah. 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 All right, here we go. This one's for both of you. The last one. One word that best describes your family. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is just tricky. Ooh. One I, word that because that's like that best describes our family. family. Yeah, it's a tough one, right? Oh man. <laughs> hey. Oh, I don't know. Uh, God, close. wait, it's, it's so wait. Look, one word that describes. Uh. I have mine. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> I was gonna say soulmate, but I know you don't believe in soulmate. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Go down that path. Um. Oh, here it comes. Okay. Ready? It's kind of like two words. One, but. Two, two, three, three and reveal. Imperfect. Oh, Fighters. I was perfectly perfect. Either perfect. way, both amazing. I think yeah. Would you say? Imperfectly perfect. Imperfectly yeah. perfect. Yeah. All right. So poetic. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much thank for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure to listen to Jana Mike's podcast, Wind Down, best title ever for a podcast. It's <laughs> streaming on iHeartRadio. All right, we've been talking about the sad passing of beloved feline Grumpy Cat. She took the internet by storm, so we're continuing to celebrate the perfect life she Oh, led. perfect. Yeah. Check, I don't even like puns, but I did it, Jeremy. Just for Grumpy Cat. Check out this video with Grumpy's caretakers to see if people was able to turn Grumpy's famous frown upside down. Hi, my name's Tabitha Bundeson, and I am the owner of Grumpy Cat. Me and my daughter, Crystal, share her. We're from Arizona, and this is my brother, Brian. I'm Brian Bundeson. I took the original photo of Grumpy Cat that went viral on the internet. She was laying in my lap and I took a picture of her and she looked cute in my lap, but in the picture she looked like way grumpy. So I posted it on Reddit because we, you know, we thought it was so grumpy that we had to share it. She's a normal cat. She's really sweet. She sleeps like 18 hours a day and plays from about 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. when everyone else in the house is trying to sleep. <laughs> I hate to break Grumpy Cat's reputation, but have you ever actually seen her smile? No. Never. Grumpy Cat doesn't smile. Would you be willing to let people try and make her smile? You can try all you want. Grumpy! Grumpy, do you want to see Grumpy Toad? Are you grumpier than Grumpy Toad? Do you remember this guy? He loves you. Wants to bring you home. Does Grumpy want a tiara? Diamonds? Grumpy! Congratulations, you've just been named Best Cactress. Look who it is, Grumpy. Look who has a new album out this week. Do you like it? No? Not as good as Future Sex Love Sounds? Here you go, Grumpy, last chance. Channing Tatum, people's sexiest man alive. Grumpy jumped from photo to video because everybody online said her face was photoshopped. So we posted the first 10 second video on YouTube because we wanted to prove that she really looked that grumpy. All right, we're taking one last look at the gifts that you've been tweeting about Grumpy Cat. Been asking you to send your favorite Grumpy Cat gifts to honor the late feline. Look at this. I know. Unbelievable. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We have some messages, actually. So sorry to hear that. Uh, reacting to the death. Rest in peace, beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. 
Uh, how, did you know that Grumpy Cat's real name was Tartar Sauce? I did not know that. That's maybe the most shocking revelation that of the entire the shocking. news. And it's, by the way, it's always, it's also funny to me because it's like, well, Grumpy Cat, but real name is Tartar real name, Sauce. Real name Tartar so. Sauce. Grumpy well, Cat was a pseudonym for the actual, more obvious name, Tartar Sauce. Yeah. Anyway. Rest in now peace, Grumpy know. Cats. We'll be back with another question of the day tomorrow, or on Monday, actually, so tune in for that. Coming up next week, guys, ACM Group of the Year, Old Dominion. They're swinging by live to talk about their tour life, new music, and plenty more. Plus, Jordan Sparks is chatting about her new music coming out and a health campaign that's very close to her heart, so be sure to tune in for that. Thanks for watching. For now, we leave you with one last thing from Giselle Bryant. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Hi, I'm Giselle Bryan from The Real Housewives of Potomac, and this is One Last Thing. The last time I got chills was when I was told that Every Beauty was going to be in Target. I was like, yes! The last time I got my hands dirty was, well, I just bought a house that I gutted, and um, I got my hands dirty. The last book I read was, my word, my new book, and I actually got chills because it is a bestseller on Amazon.com.